Okay, it's 10.01, I think I can start. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone, hello. Welcome to our second Grass Boys webinar. Uh, just before we start, we'd like to mention the very unfortunate event which took place in Poland, uh, the recent fire, uh, right? Fortunately, no casualties were reported, but nearly 1,400 shops were burnt in the shopping center, causing power cuts in significant parts of the city. And now efforts are underway to restore all the affected areas, and uh, we wish to express our thoughts and support on behalf of the Grasspoist team where, to all of those affected by this major event. Uh, before we begin today, I will just give you a few basic housekeeping rules. Uh, you can use the chat for questions and answers. Please uh, kindly ask you to keep your microphone off when others are speaking. And uh, as you can see, the registration for the event has already started. So please turn your camera off if you do not wish to be seen in the registration. And I'll collect your questions in the chat and there'll be dedicated time for discussion after the presentations. Now I see people are still coming. I'd like to welcome today's speakers, Carol Del Mazo and Fotis Mistakopoulos for Operas and Ronald Snyder from the OAPEN Foundation. Today, our topic uh, will be about assessing open access books and shedding light on peer review with PRISM, the peer review information service for monographs. So in this webinar, uh, we'll talk about uh, what is peer review in relation to responsible research assessment. You will learn how PRISM works and how it helps increase transparency in peer review for open access books and we'll reflect on how PRISM could be useful in the context of responsible research assessment. Our agenda for today, uh, we'll start with a presentation introducing the GrassQuest project, responsible research assessment and peer review, which will be carried out by Fortis. Then we'll dive into the topic of opera services in the framework of GrassQuest with Carol. And finally, Ronald will present the peer review information service for monographs. I'll introduce the speakers before giving the, the floor to them. So I'll start with Fotis. Fotis Mikstakopoulos is a project policy officer at OPERAS. So OPERAS is the research infrastructure for open scholarly communication in the social sciences and humanities in the European research area. Fotis has a background in library and information science and his professional journey includes role in, roles in academic libraries within the UK and involvement in EU funded initiatives. In particular, he currently contributes to the strengthening of open science skills and practices through his work in the Skills for EOS project, which some of you may know here, uh, with a special emphasis on the social sciences and humanities. He also participates in initiatives promoting responsible research assessment, such as the Grasspost project. And finally, Fotis represents Operas in two core working groups, which focus on addressing multilingualism and language biases as well as an improving the recognition and reward system for peer review. Uh, and our second speaker is Carol Del Mazo. She also works at Operas as the service marketing and community outreach officer. Her work focuses on the promotion and marketing of Operas services, as well as integrating communication, user outreach and training strategies in a variety of European projects, including GraspOS. Before joining Operas, Carol worked for five years as the science communicator and manager for the RECEED project, an SSH research project based at the University of Coimbra and funded by the European Research Council. In addition, Carol has 12 years of experience as a journalist for TV and websites and holds a master's degree in new media and web practices from Nova School of Social Sciences and Humanities. And our last speaker today is Ronald Snyder. He is CTO Head of Research at OAPEN. He joined the OAPEN Foundation in 2000, 2011, and he is responsible for the operational, technical, and data-related aspects of the OAPEN Library, the Directory of Open Access Books, and the Open Access Books Toolkit. Ronald has a background in library and information sciences and information technology, and he holds a PhD in social sciences. He's been active in the field of open access books since 2008, both at a practical level and as a researcher. Before that, Ronald worked in several profit and unforeprofit uh, organizations as an IT and information management specialist. And when working at Amsterdam University Press, Ronald was already part of the team working on the OAPEN project. 
Now, without further ado, I will hand over to Fotis and I wish you all a very interesting webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Lottie, for this introduction. Um, so what I will uh, do, uh, as uh, Lottie explained, uh, first and foremost, I will provide an appetizer, if you like, about the peer review, uh, GRASPOS, and uh, how it can be thought of in the context of responsible risk assessment. Uh, GRASPOS at a glance. So uh, this is a project that aims to develop an open and trusted federated infrastructure, uh, which uh, the fundamental uh, concept behind it is to uh, enable and introduce open science principles into the responsible risk assessment movement. Uh, this can be done uh, in two ways. The infrastructure uh, aspect is about uh, data tools and services, but also we have uh, the guidance uh, perspective, which is uh, implemented through the Open Science Assessment Framework. Now, these are uh, deliverables that you can find in Zenodo if you like to find out more, but we, we can't go into detail for today. But uh, essentially what uh, the OSAF is trying to do is translate uh, open science principles and uh, into responsible assessment practices. Uh, and this is aimed at three different levels uh, in terms of research assessment and uh, target audiences, which is the individual or group uh, researchers, um, research performing or research uh, funding organizations, and of course, at, at the country level. Of course, there is a pilot. There are pilots that are aimed at thematic levels, like SSH, social science and humanities, or computer science. And then this is another concept that, in many ways, essentially covers all three levels uh, from different perspectives. Um, and now uh, let's go straight into peer review because the theme today is about uh, mainly it's about Prism, the the, the service, but. Uh, this paper was written uh, by these uh, authors, uh, and it's about how to improve scientific peer review. And they identified four uh, school of thoughts. I'm not going to read them all out. But the one we're interested in, let's say today, it's the Democracy and Transparency School, uh, which is about making evaluation of research more democratic and transparent. And this is the conversation that we would like to have today in a, in a certain way. Now, when it comes to uh, discussing uh, peer review in these uh, co concepts uh, about um, transparency uh, and openness, uh, we have, let's say, on the one uh, hand, we have the double-blind uh, peer review process, uh, which was what was traditionally happening, or the single-blind. I know there are many types of peer review, but I'm just trying to, to let's say, uh, demonstrate the, the two extremes in this case. And then we have the newer uh, kind of... Um, uh, traditions now that uh, we're trying to develop uh, from an open science perspective, which is to have open identities, open peer reviews. Uh, and uh, there are arguments for both uh, for both sides. There are disciplinary differences, let's say, uh, sometimes when it comes to whether you should have blind peer review or open identities. For example, in SSH, it's common that you have um, smaller groups, smaller disciplines uh, with, uh, you know, few experts, let's say, that could be easily identified uh, even if uh, if the peer review is blind or uh, then it creates some maybe some uh, issues when it comes to having open identities. So there is conversation to be had in that respect. Um, we have the pre-publication uh, peer reviews uh, and the post-publication uh, peer reviews as well. So pre-publication would uh, probably result into a peer-reviewed publication in the end. This also happens uh, in, in the more traditional, uh, let's say, um, narratives that we had uh, with editors having uh, this kind of overview of uh, what could uh, go through to peer review uh, or not. And then we have the post-publication, which is uh, essentially a little bit more like um, preprints being published as quickly as possible. And this allows uh, for, let's say, more equitable, more uh, democratic uh, kind of uh, publication model where peer review happens uh, in a community, uh, by the community, in a community-led way. And then we have uh, in the third level, I think uh, this is about GrassPoise as well. And as I said, we have the infrastructure on the one side, which is the data tools and services, but also we have the guidance. And what uh, is important here is to remember that it's about responsible research assessment. And the narrative around responsible research assessment is that we don't only use um, numbers, we don't only use quantitative measures uh, in order to do the research assessment, which in a way, uh, data tools and services will allow us to uh, bring this kind of numbers into the research assessment from the grass perspective, but from an open science perspective, as we already discussed. 
uh, but also we need the guidance. The guidance is important, and that's what OSAF is going to do uh, in the project uh, to ensure that we are doing things responsibly. And this is something very close to, to our hearts, let's say, in the SSH uh, domain. So um, what are the challenges? Some of the challenges, let's say, not all of them. Um, should we have open peer review or transparent peer review? There are degrees of openness when it comes to this discussion. Uh, how open should the peer review be in terms of uh, just the reports or the entire uh, identities of the reviewers? Uh, this is a discussion to be had. Um, uh, we also uh, work a lot with uh, OSAF at least is being informed by the scope evaluation framework, which is about uh, values, context, options for evaluating, probing, uh, and evaluating the evaluation. This is what the letters stand for. And essentially, the probe uh, value, the probe step in this uh, scope evaluation framework is about understanding if any sort of evaluation process that is going to be introduced in an institution, be it a research performing organization or a research funding organization, uh, whether this kind of evaluation can be gamed, if there are any um, potential for misuse and any issues that would be uh, arise from this process. So um, always rewarding peer review should be thought very carefully how to how this should be done. And this brings us to the question, what would be appropriate incentivization of peer review? Uh, so more people do peer review and peer review thoughtfully and um, let's say avoid the kind of examples that we've seen recently in certain publications where um, AI assisted, uh, let's say assisted um, peer reviews have been published. Uh, we we and there is big discussion to be had as well on this. Uh, why this? Uh, why is this happening? Uh, how we come to this point? Uh, but uh, this is all I wanted to uh, remind everyone about the topic today uh, about peer review and responsible risk assessment. And now, before we go to Carol's uh, presentation, I would like to uh, to for us to just have like a warm up, a mentee. Uh, just to see, uh, to, to get your thoughts on a, on a couple of questions about uh, peer review. So I will leave this on uh, on the screen uh, for a couple, uh, for a few seconds. And I will also write in the chat the code for anyone who wishes to uh, join the mentee. Okay, I'm gonna open now the uh, the presentation. And, and the first question is more like um, a warm up, just to uh, since we thought uh, with Carol and summer is coming, uh, <laughs> um, what would people prefer? Uh, <laughs> uh, what would you do uh, if you've given the option? Uh, we see, I see a lot of uh, friends of uh, hiking, maybe, and trekking on mountains. I don't, uh, interesting. So few, few uh, will stay at home and a few don't know what's a, <laughs> what's a holiday. Uh, let's discuss this on a different webinar <laughs> uh, when given the, the opportunity uh, for those who um, would like to find out what's a holiday. Um, thank you, but I think now we'll go to the next question just the, in the interest of time. Um, okay, now, to, how do I, yeah. Have you ever peer-reviewed a monograph book before? Now we use both titles because this is this. Uh, we understand that this could be like uh, any, uh, you know, people from different disciplines. So, uh, so we would like uh, to just have a um, an idea of whether uh, many of you have uh, peer-reviewed or not uh, a book before, because this is what we're talking about today, specifically open access books uh, for that. So most of you not. That's that's interesting. That's good to know.
And the final question would be, do you consider peer review is being rewarded in research assessment? So uh, I think some people have already responded to that. That's uh, 2.8, that would be below average at this uh, um, stage. Uh, I hope that we will come back to this question after uh, the PRISM presentation, uh, given that we will have discussed uh, PRISM as well, if you have any questions. But this is, these are the, the, I would like to hear some thoughts as well, whether you, uh, those who say maybe uh, yes or no, uh, why that is. So that would be interesting in, in, from my perspective as well to, to listen to your thoughts because this uh, is also a discussion. Um, I don't have anything else to, to add here. Uh, Carol, I think you can uh, take over and introduce uh, operas in the context of Grass Boys. Thank you, Fortis. If you just, uh, yes, thank you. Yes, I see lots of peers of running to the mountain, so I'm happy <laughs> with this. Uh, well, let's keep going. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so just following up what, on what Foti said, uh, as also Lotti uh, started introducing, Operas is a research infrastructure for open scholar communication in the social science and humanities in Europe. What we try to do is coordinate resources to address the needs of the community. Uh, especially in Europe and in SSH. To do that, we have uh, some services to try to meet these needs. So when it comes to finding resources in a variety of languages, we have Go Triple. you can find articles, you can find data sets, you can find uh, projects, people. So Go Triple is a discovery platform for this. If the goal is to publish, then you have Pathfinder that can help you uh, finding specific editorial services for what you need. I will skip quality assurance services because it's a topic of today and Ronald will speak about this uh, very soon. Uh, we also have services to make it easier for so uh, citizen science. That is a platform where you can meet people and collaborate for doing participatory research. We also have hypothesis, which is a bridge. It's a place to foster dialogues through blogging and also analytic services such as metrics uh, that can help us understand the usage and impact of open access books. When we come to GRASPOS, which is our contest today, uh, Operas has two important roles. One, as a technical partner. So if you want to build this framework, which is open science aware, uh, we need data, service, and tools to make this possible. So we help with Opera services to help building this uh, framework where open science is a key point. On the other hand, in GRASPOS, we have nine pilots, and three of these pilots are thematics. So Operas is leading the pilot on social science and humanities. And the key thing for us in this process of piloting within the GRASPOS is to bring the community together. So for us to think of this new context, context of research assessment, we want to do this with the community. So trying to think of evaluation with the ones who are evaluated. And during this process, we have been inviting the community to reflect with us and think which are the ways and the paths we need to take to reform research assessment in this thematic area, which is very important uh, for us. From the side of the technical contribution, we are aiming at uh, using three of our services in the context of GRASP OS. Um, Prism, is, as I said, is the key one for today. But we also have metrics because metrics can help us uh, see the usage and the impact of open access books. So if we want, uh, especially in the context of social sciences and humanities, to value different outputs, such as open access books, so metrics can help us understand how the books uh, have been uh, used, where they have been uh, seen, so we can see the metrics towards the open access books and their usage and impact. On the other hand, if one of our goals, again, thinking of this new context of research assessment is to value not only these three or four main journals in English, if you want to value different publications, different outputs in different languages. So we definitely think that GoTriple's data set can help us to value this, to show this variety of outputs we can value and we should value in social science and humanities and not only in English. So multilingualism is one important concept we want to bring to the new, to the new context of research assessment 
reform. And as I said, the topic today is PRISM. So now I give the floor to Ronald and you let's learn about this specific service today, this morning. Thank you. No, well, thank you, Carol. Now I'm going to do the scary thing and try to share my screen while talking, which is always a bit uh, interesting. See if it works. And apparently it seems to be working. That's always good. So thank you um, again. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, open access books and peer review and how we uh, make them the peer review process visible in the directory of open access books. Um, you heard my name already. I'm Ronald Snyder. I work for the OAPEN Foundation. And um, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit more about the directory of open access books, what it is. And I'm going to introduce PRISM. And then I'm going to do a little, uh, going to think a little bit about what PRISM um, can mean for research assessment and well, basically um, draw a conclusion based on that. So let's start about with the directory of open access books and um, the PRISM tool. Um, the directory of open access books is a service that we provide by the, uh, as, from the OAPEN Foundation, and it gives access to peer-reviewed uh, open access books. And um, obviously books are uh, very much uh, the, the preferred publication type in the humanities and social sciences, but actually I would say about 25% of the books are in DOAB uh, that have been listed in DOAB are actually on STEM subjects. So while the, um, uh, the focus here is basically on the SSH, on the, there is actually quite a lot of STEM titles in DOAB as well. Anyway, um, the DOAB was launched in 2013, so it's already a decade old. Um, as you can see, the picture is, I should update the picture where it says 74,000 titles because basically now we have listed over 84,000 um, titles. The titles are not hosted on the DOA platform, but basically they are linked. Uh, it just contains links to to books on other platforms, be it uh, on the uh, OAPEN library or Muse or JSTOR, but also on uh, many uh, publisher platforms. Um, and yeah, there are quite a lot of publishers um, listed in DOAB. As you can see, there's over 700 now. And yes, we have quite a lot of languages in DOAB as well, not just English, but um, Actually, if you look very, very carefully, you might even find the title in Klingon. Um, the whole infrastructure is built on DSpace with an open source um, repository software and all our metadata um, that you can find in the DOAB is freely available and uh, is put in the public domain under a CC0 license. So for publishers, it's free to participate in the directory of open access books. And there are only, well, there are two very important requirements to meet. First of all, books that are to be listed in DOAB must be available under an open license. So a license that allows not just um, the use for private purposes, but actually allows reuse. So most of the titles will have a Creative Commons license, but there are other licenses used as well. And this is quite important and does make sense in, in the whole PRISM description. All the books listed in DOAB should, be, um, should have undergone an independent and ex external quality control uh, before publications. And as you can see in this um, this chart here, the, the number of titles has been growing quite quite rapidly in the last few years. So um, what is PRISM? PRISM is basically a service that we sort of bolted onto the directory of open access books. Um, as has been mentioned before, it's a, a PRISM is a short for peer review information service for monograph. And basically what it does, it standardizes the way 
um, to describe the peer review process by uh, as it, as it is done by the publisher. So um, what happens is publishers are enabled to provide one or more standardized uh, descriptions of their process and those um, process descriptions or those prism prism records um, are available at the book level so when you look at a certain book you can see how it has been what how it has been peer reviewed uh, or at least what process has been used just to make sure um, to make sure there's no misunderstanding prism does not contain or show the actual peer review report it just shows the process so you, um, it's not like in open re, open peer review, where you can see what a reviewer um, wanted to change on a certain uh, publication. This is just a description of the process, and those descriptions are, as I said before, available at the book level, and also at the publisher level. So there might be publishers that use. Um, like perhaps four or five different processes, which you then can find on the publisher description. And um, obviously one book has undergone one type of process. So you'll find that sp particular process at the book level. Um, as I said before, it, it, it Prism is um, part of the DOIB uh, website and um, that the description is made available in several ways. Um, there's an API. Uh, there's the, the metadata that you can use in, in other ways. And there's a widget. And um, what I think um, it Carol already mentioned it and Fotis perhaps even also, uh, Prism is part of the Opera's service catalog. So um, basically, how does it look? Well, um, when you look at a record in DOAB, and you might find this little logo here. And when you click on it, you can you can get some information. But also when you look at the metadata of the book, you will see a description of the peer review. For instance, here you see that the review has been done on the proposal, that it was single anonymized. Uh, at a that's not open review, obviously because it's anonymized, and who is responsible for the actual decision to bu to publish something, which in this case is the uh, publisher. Um, this link here, when you click there, you can directly make a search. Um, make a search. Uh, you can directly search for sorry, for all the books that have a Prism record in the OAB, and that's currently over 5,000 books. Um, what I said before, you can, when you're in DOIB, you can click on the logo and then you'll, you'll find some information that you can directly view. As you can see on the left side, there is a key IT, scientific publishing, which has indeed five different peer review processes that they use. And when you look at the book level, uh, that's the one that you saw earlier in the, the forced mobility book, where you just see the peer review process that has been used for this particular book. Um, perhaps interesting, it's also instead of not just some standardized uh, questions and answers, there's also the possibility where a publisher can add some comments to more to further describe um, the peer review process. So um, how can you access the data of PRISM? Well, as I said before, you can use an API and the results you'll see on the displayed here on the on the right side of the of this sheet. Um, but basically you can also use the CSV export that we provide that, that contains all the metadata of DOIB. And basically when you filter on the field peer review.id you can get all the peer review descriptions in one go and for those who would like to go a little bit further you can create your own solution by using the the widget and um and if you are if you want to do more and more interesting things please click on the link and see what's what's there on their more information so this is 
Prism, how it works on a, let's say, on a technical level and how it is made available in DOAB. Of course, this is not, we're not just talking about technology, but also we are actually thinking a little bit about research assessment. So I tried to uh, make a list of um, how Prism can help um, the different stakeholders. So obviously for publishers, it helps them to display the peer review process. And basically it, it's a way to showcase um, how a publisher, um, well, basically how serious a publisher is about peer review and research um, assessment. Um, for librarians, it also helps to, to show how, how things work and which books have, uh, so there's more, which book have undergone a, not just undergone a quality assurance process because otherwise it wouldn't be part of DOAB, but actually it also describes how it is done, which helps uh, librarians to, to better assess whether those books should be part of their um, collection. And yeah, more or less the same holds true for, for funders. Um, if they have funded uh, certain, certain books um, and then it may allows them to see um, more detailed about quality assurance, which actually is something that's quite helpful because then you know that what you have funded has been looked at by peers. And so that the result is, I would say, um, from of a certain scholarly quality. And of course, um, all other users of DOIB um, helps to basically not just see how the book has been done, but it might also help you to find a publisher that might be, um, you want, you might be interested in either or by, by following their work or when you are uh, thinking about writing a monograph, uh, you might um, uh, want to consider that publisher as well. So um, yeah. So how can PRISM support research assessment? Well, it is as um, I would say sort of double quality check. Uh, a book, all books in the UAB, uh, as I said before, have undergone external peer review. And then a PRISM is an added layer of even more transparency of the, about the process. Um, what is also quite helpful is that it is more speedy than citations. Uh, obviously, books um, are cited mostly by other books, and that means that a citation might just appear after years. And of course, the peer review prism information is available at the time of the publication. And and of course, OAPEN, uh, sorry, and DOAB are freely DOAB. I should. Should have mentioned a webinar. DOAB is free for every publisher, large and small, which helps um, the biblio diversity because it doesn't add a, a big hurdle for for small um, publishers. And as you also have seen, um, there are many publishers in DOAB and many languages, so um, it 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 is not only focused on large commercially commercial open access publishers that only publish in English. And what I tried to show before, it's easy to integrate the information into other systems um, due to the metadata and the API in the widget. So in conclusion, um, PRISM is a standardized way to describe and to disseminate peer review processes for uh, open access books. And um, it's a focus, an extra focus on quality, given that we're now in the age of AI generated content, that would be very helpful. So thank you. Thank you very much, all three of you for the interesting presentation. Uh, I wanted to ask if anyone had questions in the chat, let me open. So I'll start uh, bringing the question. The first question uh, from Samira Knight Adjo. Uh, good morning, thank you. Shall we get this presentation? If I may answer, we will make the presentation available on Zenodo and we'll make the registration available on YouTube and we will post about it online. So 
make sure to stay tuned. Then the next question from Roy Vickers. So are we arguing that this peer review process should have the equivalence of a citation? Um, no, I don't think so. It's, it's not equivalent. I think there are several aspects. Um, a peer, um, of course, you can say a peer review description um, helps to understand the quality control process. Um, so that says something about how the book has come to to be and um, how well a publisher and the author have tried to make sure that all the information they put into this book has been validated. A citation is actually a it's, it's a different thing. Basically, you, a citation is just a flagging that a researcher has um, seen that particular publication. And um, that might not be a, a quality assurance. You can probably, you can have a citation like, look, this is the, the worst book on this subject you will ever read. Here you can find it. I don't think that would be a very good quality assessment. And I don't think that would be the same as um, a prism record where you can see how, the, how well the publisher has tried to make sure that the uh, information is valid. Uh, can I can I uh, just add my thoughts on this as well uh, from from the grass press perspective and uh, the discussions we've been having on um, uh, in terms of responsibility assessment grass press as well. So um, the idea of open science and responsibility assessment and research assessment and reform is to uh, not focus on citations, not focus on, on one way of, of looking at, at, the, um, at the sources or, or how to define quality or how to define excellence. I think this is about creating a more uh, inclusive and, uh, uh, let's say, step-by-step uh, -step process whereby research assessment is done differently than just looking at citations or just because we talked about that peer review can have its own quality issues. Uh, it, 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 we're just trying to identify steps along the process, which will allow us to move closer to that responsible kind of uh, perspective. Uh, it doesn't end with just using Prism and say, okay, it's there, it's uh, all done and dusted, because we talked about open reports, so um, open the, the reports of the peer review. So it's a complicated, it's a complex, let's say, process, and that's why we need uh, the open science assessment framework as well that we are producing as part of GRASPOS because we need to think about the process of the evaluation. So, and one of the exercises that we we'll have that we will that we will have is to think about where Prism, let's say, or uh, tools like Prism fit into this process, because we need to have a framework where we identify peer review first and foremost as an exercise to be considered in research assessment. So people who do peer review are recognized for it. But also, let's say uh, we've had like a conversation in, in consultation workshops whereby people are, let's say, nudged towards certain publishers to, to publish their, their monographs in, in certain uh, countries. And one of the thoughts I had is that uh, we need to have, uh, we need to move away from this kind of thinking. Uh, at least this is the conversation in, in, in an open science and responsible assessment way, whereby you're not defined by where you publish, but by the quality of your work. And um, at least even a smaller publisher or less known publisher can have, if they have the right uh, processes in place and they display them, they, they are transparent about them, they are open about communicating how they do their processes, can then be a valid resource to be used in research assessment. So this is, I think, uh, the, the the bigger picture, let's say, that Prism, we are trying to introduce Prism, and as uh, already mentioned by Carol and uh, Ronald, uh, we are looking at Prism both as a service and as a data set. Because let's say, if you're using the data set to uh, assess whether a book is part of this uh, directory of open access books, and at the same time, they, they have a transparent way of looking at um, their peer review process, then let's say you are enhancing your argument that you know this is uh, this is the steps we've been through to publish our book, so um, to be considered even further and more in in a research assessment. That's all I wanted to to add from my perspective. Any other uh, thoughts, comments? So I'll read it uh, from the chat for you. What is the next question? From Maria Machado, is there a way that Prism could be applied to preprints? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, technically, yes. 
Uh, but, sorry, sorry, can I, can I, sorry, sorry, no, yeah. can I interrupt? Because Maxim raised his hand and I think he wanted to... Um, oh, sorry. Maxim Kupayev, sorry. Uh, I just saw his hand raised earlier. He, I think he wanted to share his thoughts a little bit on what uh, I was. we were talking about. Maxim? Uh, I mean, um, without camera or with camera? Without. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. So I can, I can turn on my camera for a second. I don't know. No, um, sorry. Yeah, the, the question came in also in the chat. I was wondering also, I, I had two questions for Ronald, actually. So the uh, the major problem in the research assessment is now that the input of the reviewer is not recognized when you apply for the position. So you apply for the professorship, you have a list of articles, but basically no one cares um, how many reviews you've done. And this, but this takes a lot of time. And actually I'm one of the two people who responded that they do regularly peer review process for, for the books. It takes a lot of time, but it's not recognized. So I was wondering why the PRISM um, kind of may include um, information on how the publisher rewards the peer reviewer. You know, um, the way that the way that person who goes and sees the book and says the like the publishing info and the publisher because basically most often what you what you get you get a book um, so you get a book which costs maybe like academic books are expensive you get like hundreds hundreds hundred euros book but then you spend like three months on conducting the peer preview uh, peer review so basically hundred euros is what is being paid for the job of three months. And then also you're not allowed to list it in your CV because it's it's blind, you know. It's not, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be official. And then, and it's not evaluated by the commission if you apply for a position. So I was wondering whether you, whether you kind of have the, the uh, support or the information, like in a way, what prism not only enhance the transparency for the publisher and for the book, but also somehow um, show that it evaluates, it kind of respects the work of the peer reviewer. I mean, kind of information, you know, it's, it's, that, that was my, sorry, it was quite long, so I'll, yeah, I'll stop. So basically, if I understand your question correctly, you say um, the reward for peer reviewers, have are they listed in, in DOAB or not? And at this point, I must say the answer is no, basically because PRISM has been um, the, the task, how, no, the, the, the way PRISM has been set up, that's probably a better way to describe it. The, the way PRISM has been set up at this point is to basically only describe the process of peer review itself, uh, not how a publisher supports a peer reviewer. I think that's actually quite an interesting thing to add, but um, for now we 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 tried to keep it um, as let's say uh, to a certain basic standard to make sure that uh, publishers are able to to answer the questions that we have now. Um, and um, yeah, and of course we this is one thing that we could take into consideration, but given the um, let's say the the current status of prism i'd like to um put it um well i i i cannot guarantee that we are going to do that in a short in short notice thank you Anna. uh i'll move on to the third question what do doab administrators check when a publisher applies for prism um, once a publisher has been accepted to be a DOAB partner, they can create Prism records. So there's no additional check. Once you, once you are um, once you are a, a publishing partner uh, with DOAB, you can create Prism records. There is a sort of technical check when you create a record that we look if there's no let's say things that are. Um, described in a way that might might confuse people, but that's only a technical check. Thank you. Uh, next question from Nikki Clarkson. If a monograph has open peer review, are the reviews named in the PRISM records? 
I'm wondering if it can be used to benefit peer reviewers by surfacing this information. Um, well, uh, at this point, I don't think that happens. What we do, what we did do with with Prism is that we try to make it into a, well, basically it's a list of questions. So that means that it's all uh, very much standardized. Uh, but um, again, technically it's possible because basically um, for uh, a publisher can add some information in free text. So it, it should be possible to add the name of the reviewers, but um, it will require a little work on, on, let's say, both our sides and the side of the publisher. Thank you. Uh, next question from Oliver Alchin. Apologies if I missed this in the presentation, but would it be possible to incorporate PRISM into an institutional repository or is it only available via DOAB? Thanks. Uh, well, that's a good question. Well, currently it is uh, something that is technically part of DOAB. So D uh, PRISM does not live on its own, so you cannot... It, um, add the PRISM system as it is now directly to another repository. But uh, given that it's all open source software and PRISM itself in a technical sense is not super complicated, I think uh, that's a problem that can be solved relatively easily if we would like to do that, at least in a technical sense. I see. Uh, where was I? Next question. We have quite a few questions just are coming in. Uh, can we link the open book system with DOAB? Open book system being OBS. Um, I'm not sure if I'm familiar. I am familiar with the open book system, but if you mean that, can can I, when I have books in one system, can I have them listed in DOAB? Uh, there are several ways we can do that, but. Um, and once a book has been described in DOAB, we can add PRISM records in, in there. I, I hope this answers the question. I will see if Samira did it answer your question. I guess if no answer, that it did answer the question. Uh, I was told I skipped a question in the chat. Did I miss Maria Machado's question? Is there a way that PRISM could be applied to preprints? Is the one we were. Sorry, oh, I forgot right. to bring yeah. it back to you. Sorry. Um, yeah. Well, um, actually, uh, one of the questions of of the uh, in in Prism is um, on what what stage the the peer review has been done. So, um, from that point of view, we can, the answer should be yes. Um, but again, what I said before. Currently, PRISM lives as a, a tool within DOAB, and in DOAB, we don't have um, preprints listed yet. So that makes it a bit complicated. Apologies, Maria, for skipping your question before. Um, let me, so we have a comment. Uh, let me know if I miss questions. I'm trying to follow in the chat. Uh, next is a comment from Kave Sargan. I agree that peer reviewers should get credit for their work based on contribution. They would be then keener to contribute, same in journals. So it's more of a comment. And Roy Vickers, another comment. I think there is a lot of benefit in an open review process overall. Um, uh, yeah, I can. Well, yes, um, I I do understand. Basically, what we try to do with DOAB is not to pick any side or say any uh, quality assurance process is better than the other. Um, the, the main goal of DOAB is to describe the quality process. And um, we are a bit like Switzerland. We don't, we try to stay neutral and not picking sides. So yes, uh, oh, um, I, I do understand the, the benefits of an op open review process. I also understand um, the thinking that goes in by, by either using a 
partly or completely anonymized peer review. And I think for, for the role of the OIB is not to say this one is better than the other. The role of the OIB should be, look, this is how the publisher has done the quality control. And based on that, we um, you can draw your own preferences or conclusions. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, and I think there's a last question. How many publishers make use of Prism? Does it need oh. more effort for them? Oh dear, I should have checked that because basically I can't, don't know the number by heart. Uh, sorry, I need to get back on that. Uh, does it uh, mean a bit more effort? Yes, in um, it, 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 the, the amount of effort basically, uh, I'll thank my, my, my colleague Laura will, will, will check those numbers. Um, does it uh, more effort? It, it depends if a publisher has like, uh, for instance, like K, uh, KIT, um, Karlsruhe Institute for Technology, they have like five different peer review processes. So it takes a little bit more effort for them to tell us this book has this particular um peer review description needs this particular peer review description if there's one publisher that is there a publisher that says well we use we use one description for all our books then it is relatively straightforward because then basically we can just apply those those this information oh and um to answer your um thank you thanks to my colleague uh, laura there are currently 18 publishers in uh participating in PRISM and yeah, what I said before, there are over 5,000 books described. Thank you, Arnold and Laura for the, getting the numbers. Uh, first, did I miss any questions? Because uh, there were quite a few comments in the chat. <laughs> Please raise I, your I, hand if I missed I someone. Can. Yeah. Yes, I just want to uh, come back to the question on OBS open book system because it's a quite in interesting one. So uh, as far as I understand, open book system is a workflow management system uh, used by uh, uh, some academic publishers, particularly in the US, uh, if I understand well, for example, MIT Press. So there is a question about the potential integration, which in my opinion doesn't exist yet between GOAB, uh, PRISM, and this system. Uh, and the comment uh, from Samira says, I'm a librarian and I'm thinking of putting researchers work on OBS. I'm wondering if it's a double job to put work on both the OBS and GOAB platforms. So that's a question for you, Ronald, I guess. Um, yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm afraid the answer might be yes. Um, for instance, MIT, if uh, MIT Press or the MIT Press, I should say, um, actually provides us with metadata um, to add to DOAB, um, because the role of DOAB is basically a, a directory showing where a certain book can be can be found, and I think that um, <clears throat> sorry that um, tools like OBS are serve a diff different purpose they are more there to help the creation of the of the book or let's say the to support the publication process so yes there there um, if you i think there will be a little bit of double work of course um we can try to minimize that um just as a some uh, i'm actually working with uh pkp uh for the open monograph press uh tool where they are working, where we are working on a way to automatically add the metadata of published books to the UAB. So we can sort of try to minimize that strain. Thank you both. Uh, so I think you've seen there's a comment from Laura Wilkinson for those interested in recognition for research activities such as peer review to have a look at Rescognito. And uh, I am skipping down to another question uh, since I see our time is nearly up from Nikki Clarkson. It is great to see that the 18 publishers engaging with PRISM, but that leaves a much larger number in DOAB that are not engaging. Are there plans to encourage other publishers to take part? 
Um, well, we have um, on a let's say, especially when DOA, uh, when DOAB, sorry, when Prism was launched, we we certainly made sure that that um, um, we that people should know about it. Um, but I think it might also be that publishers um, need some time to think about this question whether or not to to go for it and um, what it will mean um, so but there, there will be some I think um, actually um, not so long ago Taylor and Francis which is quite a large publisher also publicly made uh, stated that they will that they have been joining uh, prism and that's why we have um, quite a lot of records from them and um, that might probably not have gone un unnoticed by their direct, I would say, competitors. But um, I also think that publishers might feel it, uh, they, they need a little time to prepare and to think about it, because this is a, a relatively new thing. And perhaps like DOAB itself, if you can remember the first few years, there were not so many records uh, there. And then after a few years, it, it really took off. So I'm, I, I hope and I think it will, uh, the same curve will apply here as well. And also yeah, from, our may... side, uh, from our go, side, from our side, it's yeah. our goal for the next months and years as well to raise awareness about the service and make more publishers getting to know it, understand it better, their benefit. So it's a also a, it's a joint effort as well from our side. And from a responsible risk assessment perspective, I think this is exactly the idea that the more we introduce this kind of um, solutions into research assessment processes if academics understand that you know this can be valued this this is a process that could be included in a research evaluation process then perhaps there will be that kind of momentum and initiatives that will um, uh, support researchers to publish in open access books in publishers that publish in the OAB and they want to use prism so it's a, it's a, you know it's it's about the paradigm shifting let's say uh, to be very very ambitious with the word paradigm shifting but uh, it's research culture it's about changing research culture and that takes time, uh, but I think uh, it's already encouraging. And th this is our work to provide a novel way of looking at things uh, when it comes to peer review, at least for open access books, uh, and to be included in this process. So that's uh, from the GrassQuest perspective, this is what we're also trying to do and discuss with our community. Yeah. Thank you very much all for the interesting discussion. I think uh, not only our time is up, but I see we don't have any questions left in the chat. I'd like to thank very much the participants and the speakers for taking the time to come here today with us for this very informative webinar. We will put the slides and the recording online on the Nodo and on YouTube, and then we'll make it available through our website. So you will be informed when this happens. Last thing before I leave you, uh, we will share a feedback form today or tomorrow, please take the time to fill it in as it helps us adjust uh, next webinars.